In this video, we're going to focus on the photoelectric effects and how to solve chemistry problems associated with it. So what is the photoelectric effect? So let's say if we have a metal, and if we shine light on this metal, if it has the right frequency, the electrons in this metal can be ejected off the surface. So the energy that's carried by a photon can be transferred to an electron given it enough kinetic energy to escape from the atoms of the metal. And so that's the basic idea behind the photoelectric effect. Now, this light has to be of a certain wavelength. If the frequency is not high enough, the electrons will not be ejected off the surface of the metal. Now I'm going to use red light as an example because red light has a relatively low frequency compared to uh, blue light. So for most metals, if you shine it with red light, it's not going to be enough. Red light doesn't have enough frequency or enough energy to eject an electron from the surface of this metal. So it doesn't matter if you increase the intensity of the red light. So if you shine more red light photons on this metal, no electrons will be ejected off this metal. Now, let's say if you shine blue light, which has a much higher frequency than red light, on this metal, then electrons will be ejected off the surface of the metal. Now, if you increase the intensity of the blue light, let's say if you add more photons on this metal surface, more electrons will be ejected off the surface. So there is a threshold frequency, a minimum frequency, at which electrons will be ejected. Once you surpass that frequency, if you increase the intensity, then you can increase the number of electrons that will leave the surface. But if you don't pass that threshold frequency, increasing the intensity will have no effect on ejecting the electrons. So now looking at this problem, it says that a certain metal has a work function of 3.06 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, and light with a wavelength of 450 nanometers shines on the surface of the metal. What is the threshold frequency? So what equation can we use to calculate the threshold frequency? The work function in chemistry, you might see it as E0, is equal to Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. You can use W for the work function if you want to, because W corresponds with work. But I'm going to use this equation now. So we're given the work function, which is 3.06 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And Planck's constant, which is h, that's equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And so we can calculate the frequency. So the frequency, it's simply the energy divided by Planck's constant. So it's 3.06 times 10 to the negative 19 joules divided by 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. So the threshold frequency in this problem is 4.626. 62 times 10 to the 14 Hertz. So unless you shine light with a frequency that's equal to or greater than this number, no electrons will be ejected off the surface of this metal. So the frequency has to be equal to this number or higher. If it's less than this number, the electrons are not going to leave the metal. They're going to just stay on it. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. So how can we find that? The kinetic energy of the ejected electron is equal to the energy of the photon minus the energy that's required to eject the electron. So let's just use some numbers for example. Let's say 
just for the sake of illustrative purposes, that it takes 200 joules of energy to release the electron. And let's say if we shine 300 joules of light energy on this metal, then if 200 is used to free the electron, the remaining 100 is the kinetic energy of the electron. That's how much energy it has left over to move away from the metal. So the difference between the energy of the photon and the energy that's required to free the electron, that difference is the kinetic energy of the electron. And so the greater the difference, the more speed that the electron will have as it leaves the metal surface. Now the energy of the photon is basically Planck's constant times the actual frequency of the photon minus the work function, which is Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. Now, we don't have the frequency of the photon. We have the wavelength, so we need to adjust the equation. If you recall, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. So the frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the frequency with this term. So the energy of the photon can also be expressed using this equation. It's Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength minus this thing, which we already have it in joules. So I'm going to leave the work function as E0. So this is the equation that we need to calculate the kinetic energy of the electron that's released if we're given the wavelength of light that shines on it. So it's going to be Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength, which we need to put this in nanometers. A nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meters, so you can write it as 450 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So this right here will give us the energy of the photon minus the work function, which we already know it to be 3.06 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So go ahead and plug in these values into your calculator. So the answer that I have is 1.357 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that's the kinetic energy of the electron after it's released from the metal. Now let's move on to part C. What is the speed of this electron? To find the speed, we need to use this equation. The kinetic energy of an electron is 1 half mv squared. So we have the kinetic energy is 1.357 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And the mass of an electron, which has to be in kilograms and not grams, it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So what we need to do is take 1.357 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 0.5 and then take that result divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. So you should get 2.979 times 10 to the 11 which is equal to the square of the speed. So now to calculate the speed take the square root of both sides. So the speed of the electron is going to be 545,815 meters per second. Or you can write it as 5.46 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So that's the speed of the electron. Number two, the work function of potassium metal is 2.3 electron volts. What is the maximum wavelength of light 
that is needed to free an electron from the surface of potassium metal. So how can we find the answer? Well, we know that the work function is equal to Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. And we know that the frequency is the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So the work function is equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the maximum wavelength. Now let's rearrange the equation to calculate the maximum wavelength. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by the maximum wavelength divided by the work function. So on the left side, these two will cancel. And on the right side, the wavelength will cancel. So the maximum wavelength is Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the work function of potassium metal. Now we need to get the work function in joules. Right now we have it in electron volts. So how do we convert electron volts to joules? So let's start with 2.3 electron volts. You need to know that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So this will give you a work function of 3.68 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So now we can plug it into the equation. So we have Planck's constant, which is in joules times seconds, multiplied by the speed of light, which is meters per second, divided by the energy, or the work function, in joules. So notice that the unit joules cancel, and seconds cancel as well, giving us the wavelength in meters. So you should get 5.40 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now let's convert the wavelength from meters to nanometers because it's typically reported in nanometers with these kinds of questions. So let's start with this value and keep in mind that 1 nanometer is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So what you could do is take this value, move it to the top. And by doing that, the negative 9 changes to positive 9. So this is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 7 times 10 to the positive 9 nanometers. So negative 7 plus 9 is positive 2. So this becomes 5.4 times 10 squared nanometers. And 10 squared, 10 times 10 is 100. So 5.4 times 100 is 540. So the wavelength, or rather, the maximum wavelength that is needed to free an electron from the surface of potassium metal is 540 nanometers. Anything less than this number will be enough to free an electron. So if we shine, let's say, light with red light with uh, 670 nanometers, red light won't be strong enough to knock off an electron from the surface of potassium metal. But let's say if we shine blue light on it with a wavelength of 480 nanometers, that should be enough, or it will be enough, to remove an electron from potassium metal. So as you can see, red light usually doesn't have enough energy to knock off an electron from a metal surface. But blue light can for certain metals. Now let's move on to part B. If light with a wavelength of 425 nanometers shines on this metal, what will be the kinetic energy of this electron in electron volts? So around 425, you're dealing with purple light. 
and that's definitely high enough to remove an electron. Now, if you want to calculate the kinetic energy, given the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation that's on it, it's going to be Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by that wavelength minus the work function of the metal. So it's going to be this number again times the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the wavelength, which is 425 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So don't forget to convert nanometers to meters. Now, the work function has to be in joules, not electron volts. So if you recall, to convert electron volts to joules, Take the 2.3 and multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And so that's 3.68 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So let's plug this stuff in. So you should get... 9.97 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. So that's the kinetic energy of the electron after its release. But now let's convert it to electron volts. So all we need to do is just divide it by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And so the kinetic energy in electron volts is 0.623 eV. Now let's move on to part C. Calculate the speed of this electron. So to do that, we need to use this equation. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. But make sure you use the kinetic energy value that's in joules. So replace Ke with 9.97 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. You don't want to use the kinetic energy value in electron volts. Now the mass of the electron is the same as the last problem, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So just like before, we're going to take the kinetic energy, 9.97 times 10 to the minus 20, and then divide it by 0.5 and then divide that by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. So you should get 2.188 times 10 to the 11. And then take the square root of that number. And so the speed that I have is 467,846.5 meters per second, which we can round it and say it's about 4.68 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So as you can see, these electrons are moving very fast. Now let's move on to our last question. The work function of calcium metal is 276.5 kilojoules per mole. What is the work function in electron volts? So one mole of calcium atoms has a work function of 276.5 kilojoules. Now, every calcium atom requires a single photon to knock off one electron. So therefore, one mole of calcium atoms requires one mole of photons. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, what do you think we need to do next? The next thing that we need to do is use Avogadro's number. So one mole of photons corresponds to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 photons. So now we can cancel these units. Now we need to convert kilojoules to joules. One kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. So now that we have the unit joules per photon. 
we can convert joules to electron volts. One electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So now what we have is the electron volt per photon, which is what we want. So it's 276.5 divided by Avogadro's number, multiplied by 1,000, divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. So it's 2.87 electron volts per single photon. So that's the energy of one photon. So that's the minimum energy that's needed to knock off a single electron. So the work function of calcium metal is 2.87 electron volts. Now what is the maximum wavelength of light that is needed to free an electron from the calcium metal surface? So to find that maximum wavelength, we know it's Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the work function in joules. So we have the work function in joules if we stop the conversion here. Because this gives us the work function in electron volts. But if we want it in joules, we need to basically get rid of this part. So this is going to be Planck's constant times the speed of light. And the work function in joules is going to be 276.5 divided by Avogadro's number times 1,000. So the work function is 4.59 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So the maximum wavelength is 4.33 times 10 to the 7 meters, which is equivalent to 433 nanometers. And so that's the answer.